Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a reset of the microprocessor in a music and sound model MC602 master station. Yesterday, I had a conversation with a fellow named Frank in Florida, and he has an MC602 with a problem. Problem with his MC602 is that the buttons on the master station won't operate the functions correctly. He indicated that the problem started a day or two ago and in the middle of the night there was some random noises or something coming out of the speakers throughout his house. It was a little vague as to exactly what that was all about but what he found the next morning was that the, the, the time on the display, the minutes were set, the hours were flashing and the time set button and the other buttons on the master station won't work. He can't set the time, he can't turn the radio on, the intercom buttons don't seem to work, and it seems to be the technical term for it is all jacked up. Frank was all ready to take the thing out of the wall. He saw our video about how to remove an MC602 master station and he was ready and willing to take it out and send it to me. And I told him, well, let's uh, cool our jets for a moment and try something simpler. The MC602 is a modern intercom system and it does have inside of it a microprocessor that controls all the functions of how the system operates. And that includes the, the time and the radios and the presets and all, all the functions are controlled by the microprocessor. You can look at the microprocessor as being sort of the brain of the system. Since Frank lives in Florida, one of the things that had to come up in the conversation was, did all of this occur just briefly after or around the time you had a big storm with thunder and lightning and those sort of things? Because you know, if you live in Florida, they have a lightning storm in Florida like every five minutes. In the time I've taken to do this much of this video, they've already had like 47 lightning storms. So lightning can be a problem because it can damage things like microprocessors. Also, sometimes power outages it's your normal run-of-the-mill utility power outage can create problems also. How is that so? Well, microprocessors have inside of them instructions or firmware that tell the microprocessor what to do when you ask it to do something. So for instance, if you push the time set button to set the clock, what you're actually doing is when you push the time set button, you're telling the microprocessor, hey, I need to set the time now and it looks up in its instructions what it needs to do to allow you to set the time. So sometimes when you have a utility power outage where the power goes off and on and off and on again is even worse or a storm with lightning or something like that, sometimes the instructions inside the microprocessor become scrambled or confused and then when you push the buttons it doesn't know what to do so it doesn't actually do anything. Of course there could be more serious problems or other problems with Frank's MC602 but I'm a big believer in let's do the simple things first and the simplest thing to do first is do a reset on the microprocessor. Doing a reset on the microprocessor is different than turning the power to the system off. Especially on music and sound systems where they have a fairly well-designed backup power source for the memories and settings of your system. And if you turn the power off, thinking that, that you're gonna turn it off and turn it back on and all the problems are gonna go away, you'd be wrong. The backup power source in this, if you turn, want to turn the breaker off, you're gonna to need to leave the circuit off for probably at least 24 hours to run the power source down all the way, and that's not very practical. Doing a reset on the microprocessor is a deliberate action that you take where it actually resets the microprocessor back to its default original condition, and that's really what we wanna do here. As well designed as all this is, they made doing the reset somewhat awkward, and it's that's why I told Frank, I'll make you a video because trying to explain how to do this over the phone, it's gonna be way too complicated. So here's our MC602, it's powered up. It is 923 on Thursday morning and we're gonna do a reset on this. So to get to the reset switch, 
It's not behind the door here. It's not a button on the front of the panel. It's not on the edge somewhere where you can find it. It's behind the faceplate, which was not a great place to put it in my opinion. To do this, you have to take off the faceplate, which you sort of grab the sides of it and pull it forward and it slides off like this. Once you've taken that off, what you can see here in this cutout of the faceplate chassis is the display with the time on it. This large component right here, this large rectangular one that says 830117, that's actually the microprocessor. That's the brain of your MC602. Of course, you have all the buttons here, which are still in place. And down here, which I'll show you in a second, you have a reset pad. It would have been nice if they had put a little button on there, but they didn't do it because, you know, they were trying to save that all important, I don't know, eight or 12 cents on every unit that they made. And it's like, nah, we don't need to put a button there. It's good enough like that, which that was stupid. Anyway, one of the things I'm gonna caution you about before we get up into the more close-up view of all of this is, once you've taken the cover off and this is exposed, you're looking at the green part here, here and here and here, all the parts that are green. That's an actual electronic circuit board and it has all kinds of things soldered onto it. So you have all kinds of exposed connections. And to do this, you absolutely positively cannot take some big something or other and start jabbing around in there not knowing what you're doing because if you short things out, you can blow things up and kill your MC602. While this is not at all rocket science to do, you do need to have some amount of care and caution in what you do, otherwise you're gonna make your life way worse. Now, to do this, you're gonna need a couple things. For my preference is to do the actual reset, you need a small pair of needle nose pliers. They work really well. If you don't have needle nose pliers, you may need to have a common old everyday paper clip like this one, and I'll show you how to do that. Also, at the end, when it's time to put the faceplate back on, you might need a small little screwdriver, and if that's necessary, I'll show you what to do with that just in case. Let's talk about doing the reset. Well, let's get our tools ready first. So again, needle nose pliers, preferred thing to have. These are small ones. If you have big ones, that's okay too. If you don't have needle nose pliers, then what you're gonna need is a paper clip and because that's super high tech. And what we're gonna do with the paper clip is we're gonna unfold it. And the reason I chose a paper clip is because everybody's got paper clips lying around their house, or at least they should, I would think. And all we're gonna do is bend it in a shape where the ends of the paper clip are kind of close together like that because we're gonna use it as a jumper. It's gonna do the same thing as the needle nose pliers. You can see in this close up view, you can still see the majority of the board. Here's our microprocessor. Here's part of our display. Here's some of the white push buttons. And right down here, it says SW13, which would be SW is switch. It would be the 13th switch. And underneath it, it says reset. And you see there are these, on each corner, there are these little round silver solder pads. That's where the switch would have gone if they had cared enough to actually solder one on the board, which would have been an excellent idea, but they didn't. So what we have to do is we have to make a connection between one of the bottom corner pads and one of the top corner pads. It doesn't matter which one you do. You can do the right hand top and bottom or the left hand top and bottom and it will achieve the same thing. You do not go across the pads left and right, not top left, top right, or bottom left, bottom right. That won't do it. That's the wrong connection. It's got to be top and bottom. The preferred way to do this, in my opinion, is we're going to take the needle and those pliers and take the tips of them and touch the two pads. We're going to touch the top right corner and the bottom right corner of it. Now, if you don't have needle nose pliers, that's where your bent paper clip comes in play. You can bend it around so it's about the right spacing and then you can reach in there carefully and touch the two pads. It's, in my opinion, awkward to do that, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm going to do this once to show you in a close up and I'll try to keep my big hands out of the way. And then if you watch the display, which is a little hard to see because 
it's hard to get everything in the shot and be close up, it'll start flashing. And what we'll do is, I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna do it once and it'll flash and then I'm gonna reset the clock, I'll do it again and you can see the clock flash more properly. So all we're gonna do with the needle nose pliers is we're gonna reach in there and we're gonna touch the pads like this, top and bottom. And that's as long as it took. If we scan over slightly, instead of being 9.29 or 9.30, now it's flashing 12 o'clock a.m. because we reset the microprocessor, which is right here. Since we did a reset, you have erased the time setting. If you had preset AM and FM radio stations in your preset buttons, those are now erased also because those were stored in the microprocessor, which you've reset, so you've erased it all. Go ahead and reset the time. Up. And then minutes. We'll make it 9.30. And now it's 9.30 a.m. again and the clock is set. So that's how you do the reset with needle nose pliers. Now we're gonna do it with the paper clip. And I have my paper clip bent around so it's spaced out pretty good like that. You can just adjust it as you need to and reach in there and touch one, touch the other. And now we're flashing 12 o'clock again. That's how you do a reset on an MC602. I am going to cover one more thing that I talked about in the beginning. You have lots of exposed components. Don't short something out. Don't be jabbing around in there and create a spark somewhere and then the whole thing goes dead and you don't know why. You have to have a little bit of care when you do this. Once you've done the reset, now we have to put the faceplate back on. Putting the faceplate back on is a little fussy so you line it back up in its little grooves on the sides. And the tricky part is you got to have all the little button caps lined up to pop through the cutouts in the faceplate. And that's where the little screwdriver comes in handy because there's always at least one of them that's kind of sideways like that one was. And, uh, and see number four is a little crooked so we'll pop it over to the, to the right a little bit and pop the faceplate back on and you're all done. Not terribly difficult to do, just a little awkward, and hopefully seeing someone do it will make it easier for you. I hope you found this interesting, and maybe for someone, including Frank, it'll be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell, and when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification, and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.